start the activity. Okay, so uh, hi everyone. Uh, good evening, good morning, good afternoon. This is uh, Tuba Mirza, and uh, I am very grateful to all of you that you have uh, taken up time and joined us uh, in this uh, webinar. This is going to share the success story and uh, lessons learned and whatever uh, Adi has learned throughout his uh, PFMP journey. He is going to share that by himself uh, uh, in a proper uh, format and agenda. Uh, and before we properly get started with that, uh, let me uh, quickly introduce myself as well as uh, my company, On-Time Training and Consultancy Services. So On-Time Training and Consultancy Services, which I'm representing over here, is a professional training and uh, consultancy provider for project program and portfolio management. And uh, we have uh, we were founded in uh, March 2022, so it has been an year that we are in the market. Um, we are basically... Uh, in the PMI track, so we offer the uh, training and mentoring programs for PMI certifications like PMP, PCMP, PFMP, ACP, RMP, PBA, and other uh, certifications by PMI as well. We also are uh, consultancy providers of uh, project and program management. Uh, we provide that to individuals, groups, and uh, corporates. Uh, so like uh, career counseling, career advisory, uh, getting people ready for their jobs and uh, for the project and program management role, a PMO, uh, a standardization and consultancy. So all of uh, that services we also provide. Um, and if you are interested in any of that, we definitely will be able to help you. Uh, regarding myself, uh, my name is Tuba Marissa. Uh, maybe some of you already know me, or maybe some uh, of you are not. So I am based in Pakistan and uh, uh, I am the owner and uh, founder of uh, this uh, company on time training and consultancy services. So I have a professional career of around 16 to 17 years in the software industry of Pakistan. I have worked in multiple corporates and with, with uh, multiple customers as well uh, during this journey. So I started off as a software engineer uh, back in 2006. And uh, then for the next ten, nine to 10 years, I worked in um, like multiple companies at multiple levels in the same uh, software technical uh, domain. Then I gradually shifted my career to project management and then to program management and then to um, pro uh, portfolio management. Uh, on the academic side, I'm a computer engineer and I did my master's in project management uh, in uh, 2019, um, like master's in project management in 2019. Uh, on the credential side, I have uh, PMP, PGMP, PFMP uh, and uh, RMP. PSM as well, and I'm also an ATP uh, provider for PMP trainings. Uh, that's about myself, and uh, let's move to uh, the agenda of this webinar. So, Mohammad Ali, uh, a brief introduction about yourself, so that people get to know about you, and then we will move towards the PFMP. Uh, Asalaamu As Alaikum, and hello, hello everyone. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much, Ms. Tuba, for providing me this opportunity that I can share uh, my PFMP Germany journey uh, with the many of the aspirant uh, uh, who are aspiring to become PFMP. Uh, I'm Muhammad Ali Yazdani. Currently, I am working with Islamic Development Bank as its representative in Pakistan. And I'm taking care of the ISTP group activities, including but not limited to public finance, trade finance, grants, technical ass assistance, et cetera. Prior to this role, I have worked with Planning and Development Board, Government of Punjab, where our PMO was tasked to coordinate with the development partners on areas related to capacity building, governance, systems development, and resource management. I also had the opportunity to work with USAID, Aga Khan Development Network, and international NGOs, public sector corporations in Afghanistan, Iraq, and Pakistan. Wonderful. So... Wonderful. Uh, very uh, pleased to have you here. And I'm pretty sure that the audience um, are going to get benefited with your experience, like like overall experience, as well as your experience with the uh, with this uh, PFMB uh, uh, journey as well. And uh, to start the conversation, I would like to ask the very first thing that comes in anyone's mind when they are considering the standardization or uh, like getting into any global or standardization body is why why we do this like what's the need of uh, doing a certification any certification pmp or pins2 or uh, csm or uh, maybe any uh, with any other global body 
why do we need standardization or what was your uh, motivation to go with pfmd uh, how how do you think it's helping your career your role your organization actually uh, ms tuba means uh, i am a strong believer that learning is a continuous process and uh, i uh, always recall the saying from imam ali alaihi salam and he said that the value of uh, any person depends upon the art and skill which he has attained over the period of time so uh, the value of a person is the art and skill that he possesses this is the continuous learning journey that is prompting me to get into different kind of uh, skills that are needed in my career projection project uh, project uh, progression so uh, pfmp was uh, such a uh, milestone as well because uh, you know uh, uh, i am also a pmp credential holder and when i did it back in 2011 uh, i was already working as a program manager in iraq so uh, there was uh, uh, conversations related to the projects start to ends i was looking after many pro- programs at that time so when i uh, was working in the uh, pmo in the pnd uh, department government of uh, punjab so there were multiple programs and the portfolios and operations that i was looking after and uh, uh, i i thought that uh, there is a need to, to validate the skills that uh, i have acquired over the period of time and the knowledge that i possess in terms of uh, portfolio management and luckily i came across uh, one of the uh, announcement from your side on the uh, linkedin and i contacted you uh, uh, then rest is the story i am here in front of everybody telling uh, that why uh, what i have done uh, to achieve this credential uh, in my point of view uh, obtaining the pfmp certification demonstrates that you have a deep understanding of portfolio management concepts and principles and have the skills and knowledge required to manage complex portfolios so this is this is something that you know but you know uh, you want that it should be validated because pmp pmi being the global uh, project management related body and uh, it has uh, members all across the globe and uh, its certifications are uh, recognized and acknowledged across the globe so that's why uh, that was uh, a motivation that uh, i would be recognized as a uh, accomplished portfolio management professional then definitely uh, 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 these kind of uh, validations from the bodies like pmi they they help you in the career advancements uh, moreover it also improves your credibility because uh, uh it uh, provides the credibility to your management skills and knowledge that are pertaining to the portfolio management and one more thing that uh, uh, that uh, that i think uh, is very important that during the preparation for these exams or the credentials means you go through a journey which is adding value to yourself as a professional by professional by learning uh and by acquiring the new skills and uh, uh, preparation for the exam so all these uh, uh, factors just uh, uh, get together that uh, encouraged me that i should go for the pfmp certification wonderful um, and uh, i am pretty sure that even after acquiring uh, the certification you are getting benefited as you have perceived that before you uh, before you earned that um so moving forward uh, uh madhuri uh, usually uh, people who are into credentials and standardization uh, they follow a path uh, for this like uh, first they like go for project management followed by program management followed by uh, de- like departmental roles or uh, uh, the portfolio management because this is how uh, usually the journey uh, at the organizational level goes as well for most of the people but you actually did your pmp um, and then you directly uh, jump to pfmp you skipped that program management role in the uh, middle of course due to some reason 
and there must be some reason because there would be uh, many people over here who would like to know maybe uh, those who are aspirants who are uh, and that is a like one of the frequent questions that i come across when someone is uh, you know they are into this and they are just uh, doing their search so most of the people like 9 out of 10 people when i get, get an inquiry the question is i want to do pgmp or pfmp they are not sure which one they should be going with and they actually want some advice from my side and at, at times they are not even clear on what's the difference uh, between these two i mean at their level maybe uh, at the organizational level experience level they are good but from a standardization side they probably are not sure that which one they should be going with and most of the people take that advice from me first and then they uh, go with that so why what and you were pretty certain then you wanted to go with pfmp you never asked that question from me when you came to me so what was your motivation uh, for uh, going to pfmp directly after pmp uh, actually uh, as i uh, uh, told in my uh, introduction that uh, in 2011 uh, i was working as a program manager and in an international organization in iraq and at that time uh, in order to embark my journey on this path i opted for the pmp uh, certification because uh, to be very honest uh, uh, the pakistanis are very privileged and at that time the internet was not that uh, frequent or uh, the information was not available i prepared my application myself and uh, i submitted my application i did my preparation at my own asking my friends and colleagues there okay just take a test from me and so that i can appear in the examination so i i alhamdulillah completed that but uh, you see that between 2011 to 2023 there is a gap of 12 years so uh, considering that experience uh, internationally and uh, uh, means you can say at the c level means uh, i have i have been a chief executive officer in one of the public sector companies so uh, after all that journey i thought that uh, i am at that stage and uh, given uh, so much experience in public private sector uh, under my belt so i thought that uh, this is the right uh, uh, credentials to obtain and when i get in touch with you uh, you definitely endorsed my idea given uh, the amount of work and uh, the responsibility as the portfolio manager i have uh, been doing it so uh, 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 that was the reason that i was uh, uh, sure that uh, this is the level that uh, i should look forward and uh, in addition to that means uh, you know that international well being an international development professional i i also uh, did uh, my research that it is going to uh, enhance my effectiveness being the portfolio management professional uh, in the international uh, development sector where the complex projects often involve multiple stakeholders and diverse objectives but we have to uh, keep the organizational objective in our mind because uh, at the portfolio management level you are uh, looking at the broader organizational goal and uh, objectives uh, that you uh, need to ensure that those are achieved so uh, these are uh, these were some of the factors that uh, uh, were in my mind and uh, thanks to uh, your guidance as well that uh, uh i embarked on this journey and uh, completed my pfmp uh, process and progress nice so um, mamadali uh, how much time did you take like effective time uh, that you took for uh, preparation uh, usually i recommend uh, on average i recommend 100 to 120 hours of study the duration can be like uh, like it can be spread as long as it depends on your availability and other commitment but uh, usually Uh, effectively this much time is required uh, to an average uh, person to uh, get done with attempts people do that early like i have those examples as well but usually my students take this much time so uh, what do you suggest uh, to the people because there are some uh, some people who are actively preparing for their pfmp uh, in the audience section and they probably would get benefited with this uh, uh, conversation Uh, actually very interesting uh, for the uh, sake of audience knowledge i 
was uh, among the cohort uh, uh, which was the first one uh, by Ms. Tuba uh, who prepared for the PFMP. It was uh, March last year and uh, I remember that uh, our last lecture was on 2 or 3 April. Yeah, we started in Feb, uh, like on, uh, I think, uh, not in Feb, we started in uh, late Jan. And we completed yep. uh, like early March or so, or maybe late March. I don't know, but it was somewhere in March. Yeah, yeah. And I also remember that uh, uh, we communicated that uh, we are going to complete this journey latest by June thirtieth. But uh, 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 man, uh, 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 plans. But there are uh, other plans which uh, uh, Almighty is thinking, or your professional engagements uh, uh, don't allow you, means uh, soon after that, uh, there were the missions from the uh, Jeddah headquarter and the Turkey regional office. So uh, I was uh, very much preoccupied and uh, uh, the amount of work was such that I was not able to uh, cope with that situation. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, I was struggling. Uh, however, the good thing was uh, Ms. Tuba was not uh, letting me go off the track uh, from this certification. So uh, uh, I, I was reading somehow or the other randomly different uh, uh, preparation material that was provided by Ms. Tuba. Uh, but uh, I was not focused, uh, means this is the amount of work that I have to complete within this time. So uh, uh, I think, uh, uh, as you mentioned that uh, 100 to uh, 150 hours, uh, these are the requirements uh, for the preparation of exam because uh, uh, I would like to share with the, the fellow participants that I had to take uh, a one week off uh, for that matter. Means uh, uh, whatever has happened uh, over the period of year, it's okay. But now I have to sit and I have to uh, take this examination at all now. So I took uh, uh, a week off and uh, even during that, uh, there were many meetings and conferences that I had to attend electronically, but uh, that was a kind of do or die situation for me. Uh, but over the period of time, uh, randomly, I was in touch with the, uh, the presentations that were handed over to us uh, during our preparation time. There were the... Uh, uh, preparation material, uh, papers, uh, mock exam from different organization, those were given. So uh, uh, it took time, but uh, I agree uh, that uh, uh, all those people who are thinking to appear in the PFMP examination, a good 100 to 150 hours are required uh, uh, to confidently sit in the examination. Yeah, so I would like to add over here for the people who are in the audience section and who struggle with their time management for uh, like preparation, because I know that is one of the major constraints with most of the participants, uh, the aspirants actually, the PFMP uh, uh, aspirants, that they are not able to manage their time, uh, or maybe they are not able to prioritize uh, this course. They want to do that, but they are not able to prioritize because they are doing uh, demanding jobs and they have families and they have other uh, personal and professional commitment at times they are traveling as well most of my students are in continuous yeah. traveling uh, yeah. uh, same is the case with Muhammad Ali as well so uh, like that's not easy to manage and with that studying and also so Muhammad Ali is one of those students who actually under prepared like uh, as per my expectation he was not uh, like uh, rightly prepared by the time of the exam because he didn't have the time and uh, uh, like uh, like he mentioned, it was do or die situation, but he managed to score the above target uh, level in the exam. So I personally think that when you have the right experience to complement your, uh, uh, you know, your, your uh, professional skills, along with the guidance of uh, PMI, cracking the exam is not a difficulty. Even you are a little underprepared, you can sit in the exam, but your experience matters a lot. Uh, the, the right portfolio management experience. At times, people are aspiring for this role as well. They don't have the very relevant or right experience as well, but somehow they are connected to portfolio management, but not directly under that umbrella. So they struggle uh, somehow uh, with that. So I, I don't allow that to them that you underprepare. In their, in their case, they have to 
fully prepared. I don't allow them. Like from my side, it's a no no. But in case of Mama Delhi, I was uh, not hundred percent certain, but I was ninety nine percent certain that he's going to do good. Even with less preparation, he would be uh, uh, would he would be doing good because his experience is extensive in the same domain. So that actually matters for those who are thinking to go with that or who are uh, already into uh, this the milestone that your experience matters a lot. And because you are able to relate most of the situations uh, and exam is scenario based. I'm coming to the exam part as well. So we are going to discuss the exam part uh, in, the, in that question. So co coming to the next topic, what was your overall experience? Like uh, by that, uh, uh, I mean, the, how was the exam for you? Was that difficult considering that you were not very well prepared? Uh, with respect to the material that we have provided you due to the time constraints, uh, did you find that easy, difficult? Uh, what about the time management, pressure handling, uh, the overall, uh, you know, the scenarios that have been provided by PMI? Uh, what would you like to tell? Uh, because there are many people who are uh, in the audience sections who are actively preparing. Yeah, actually, uh, uh, I was uh, listening uh, to the webinars like that. Uh, especially a couple of days before my examination. So I was listening to the people and uh, uh, in addition to that, uh, the online uh, uh, people who are sharing their experiences regarding exam, for example, they were telling us uh, that the examination is a challenging and comprehensive exam and it requires extensive preparation and study. Uh, whereas uh, uh, there were others who said it is not that, uh, 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 difficult and uh, it was a valuable and rewarding experience. Uh, so I think again, uh, uh, it requires deep understanding of uh, the portfolio management concepts and principles. And uh, uh, if you, you are thoroughly prepared for the exam, then the exams looks easier to you. Uh, uh, moreover, as uh, 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 Ms. Tuba mentioned that, uh, sometimes your experience that comes to save you in such kind of situation because those who have uh, uh, experience of uh, giving uh, the professional exams they know that these are scenario based uh, examination and you are a portfolio manager and this happened and what would be your course of action and uh, you, uh, at least two responses are such that that you are doubtful that whether it would be uh, the A or B or A or C. But at that time, I think uh, it is your experience and your practice that you have done as a portfolio manager that uh, 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 comes to rescue uh, uh, the uh, participant. But I think uh, the PFMP exam is a well-structured examination and uh, it covers a broad range of portfolio management uh, uh, topics and uh, it is designed to test candidates' knowledge of portfolio management concepts and principles and practices across all five uh, domains of uh, portfolio uh, management. And uh, uh, until and unless either you have the experience or you are not well prepared, um, uh, I can say that uh, that you cannot pass this examination by chance. Yes. So I would say it's a combination. So even if you have very good experience and you are not at all prepared, uh, it's not like this that you can just write away sit in the exam and you would pass it without any preparation or without knowing the standard and the PMI way of thinking. You need preparation, but maybe uh, like maybe you can skip 10 to 15 hours uh, of preparation in that case. But uh, at, at the very least, you need to be preparing for 80 to 90 hours. Um, uh, uh, for the exam. Okay, so coming uh, to uh, that part, uh, because uh, uh, Mama Deli has mentioned that there are five domains. So let me introduce the concept of portfolio management by PMI for, for those who are very new to uh, PMI world and uh, maybe the portfolio management, and they want to know that what is really in there for them uh, by PMI and how they are going to uh, learn the portfolio management. So portfolio management uh, is a concept which talks about managing multiple projects, programs, operations under one umbrella, which is termed as portfolio. So portfolio is a, is a standardization terminology. Uh, in your organization, it can be termed as department, business function, um, some division. It can be anything. Like 
and a management structure which is managing multiple teams and multiple uh, projects and programs and uh, operations or sub programs in a way that you are achieving or contributing to some of the organizational goals and targets and benefits delivery and kpis that's the sole purpose of uh, portfolio management in that case you are actually contributing to the organization for their strategic goals and uh, uh, targets and uh, that may be early that may be quarterly that may be half yearly however your organization is uh, is uh, structured to do so pmi actually helps you in understanding portfolio management uh, in five domains so what so as per pmi whatever you are doing as a portfolio manager you are doing that in any of those five domains so it's strategic management governance management uh, performance management communication management and risk management so portfolio management uh, from the pmi uh, way is actually selecting prioritizing and doing the right work so when you select and prioritize the right projects and programs in your department or in your organization you are actually in the right direction or in the in the direction of the vision or the goal of the organization that the organization has set for your uh, respective portfolio and in that case you your portfolio or your department should have a uh, direction or goal or strategic objectives as well so that is is discussed in the strategic management then there should be some uh, overarching body who is uh, keeping an eye on you for the alignment as well as achievement of that goal that is a concept of governance in um, multiple organizations as well as in the world of pmi so the governance domains actually talks about the governance body or multiple bodies as well in case your portfolio is extensive uh, sitting in the top making sure that uh, portfolio team and managers are in alignment with those goals uh, provide decision making uh, and uh, uh, you know, for authorizations and escalations, and they perform a lot of other things as well, authorization of uh, projects and programs and their business cases and uh, so on. So, Then up comes the performance part. Performance is when you are, as a portfolio manager and uh, along with your team, ensuring the delivery of the uh, portfolio, be benefits value uh, uh, and uh, value delivery, the gains and the profits or the revenue target or the commercial or the tangible targets or the intangible targets that company has set for you or the combination of both of that. So broadly, you are delivering some tangible and intangible targets to uh, the organization, setting the timelines for that, setting the minimum thresholds for that. All of that, are you in alignment with that or not? Performance driven talks about that. And if you are not, then there are going to be certain metrics like CPI, composite ratio, and other metrics as well, which is going to keep you on track and governance body is going to help you with that. Then uh, the communication and the risk, they are supporting domains. Like we have supporting departments in the organizations like HR or IT or finance. They are overarching uh, departments or supporting departments. Likewise, likewise, risk and communication is the overarching domain. So communication is everywhere. It is in strategic, it is in performance, it's among the team members, it's between the portfolio manager and the governance body. Same is the case with risk. So risk can be at the strategic level in, in portfolio management, can be at the tactical level as well, which are escalated from the project or program to the portfolio management or to the portfolio governance body. So I'm just briefly explaining that what, what do we cover in, in that domain and how it can be interesting or uh, relevant for you. And if you go for that and if you are working in, so at times people ask me that, we are not really managing a complete a portfolio division or we are managing a subdivision, a sub portfolio. So for your information this is a concept of sub portfolio as well, which PMI maps to the portfolio. So even under one portfolio, there are multiple sub portfolios. Then that sub portfolio is also a portfolio which would be treated as a portfolio to a bigger portfolio, right? So even if you are a sub portfolio manager or a subdivision manager, then that would also be considered as a uh, portfolio management and i have written many applications uh, so far which was targeted to sub portfolios rather to portfolios and that were approved because that concept is accepted by PMI. so hope that helped and uh, for those who have already done uh, with uh, their pfmp this webinar is going to provide them with one pdf which is uh, the continue uh, continuous uh, um, you know uh, the ccr cycle continuous uh, uh, credential renewal process which is one of the requirement of PMI to renew your uh, credential uh, every three years. For that, they want 60 hours of portfolio management practice and uh, uh, knowledge and uh, upskilling. So this uh, webinar is going to 
come towards that. Okay, so moving forward with the agenda, uh, my next question is about myself. Like how uh, has been uh, your experience with my uh, services, my training, because you, you joined my training um, uh, sessions actually. And by that time, there were only training uh, sessions uh, that were provided by me. Uh, there was no self-paced or a one-on-one -on -one mentoring at that time because Muhammad Ali was my first uh, proper student for PFMP. So he was one. Um, and he was a he was the one who trusted me when I was very new in the market for this. Like so, he uh, th that um, credit goes to him. And uh, uh, and I didn't have any success story by that time because he was the first one. He was formerly the first one. I actually had one uh, success story before that, but that was more of a coaching and uh, less of a training, proper training. So um, how did you find me as a trainer? How, uh, how did you find the quality of the training material? How relevant was the training material uh, for you uh, with respect to the real exam? And uh, um, how about the application process? Because uh, for those who are actually thinking about going into this, uh, PMI actually uh, has a has an application process for every credential. And for PGMP and PFMP, this process is pretty comprehensive. So this is, I would say, 40 to 50% of your total credential. If you are not able to crack the application, which most of the people are not, if they try to do that by themselves, they usually fail. So, um, if you are not able to crack that, uh, you will not be able to eligible to sit in the exam because that is your opportunity to let uh, the PMI know that you are eligible to um, to uh, sit in the exam. And uh, for your information as well, there are only 1400, around 1400 certified professionals around the globe, uh, which are PFMP certified. So this number is uh, in itself uh, tells that this is a very elite class uh, credential. This is not for everyone. This is only for those who have the relevant experience or who have the relevant mindset, who knows to do the, like what's going to be the perks of doing the right thing at the right time, which is the uh, main, uh, you know, motive of portfolio management at the organization level as well. And uh, Muhammad Ali is from Pakistan, the same country as uh, where I belong to. And in Pakistan, uh, there are only around, I think, 14 or 15 um, uh, credential holder for this uh, as of now. And he was, I think, the 12th one uh, or the 13th one. So uh, in a country where this kind of awareness is not there, uh, your motivation to do that and your, your, uh, your uh, ability to trust myself when I was very new in the domain in, in itself is uh, very 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 much appreciable so what would you say in that regard like how did you find the overall journey uh, with uh, with me and uh, on-time training in competency uh, uh, uh i will start by saying that uh, if i am sharing my experiences as a successful pfmp uh, credential holder it would not have been possible without your mentorship and uh, your guidance uh, on this journey first of all now and uh, uh, the way you have followed up with me uh, over this whole year, uh, checking with me that what are you doing, how much you have prepared so far, how much material you have gone through, and uh, when are you going to uh, uh, appear in the examination. And finally, uh, I would like to share it uh, with the audience that uh, uh, you know, the, on the 15th of March uh, uh, was the application period uh, uh, when I was supposed to appear. That was ending on 15th of March. And uh, Ms. Tuba just called me. I was in my office and she said, open your uh, PMI account. Uh, look uh, what dates are available. I opened uh, the uh, uh, schedule and I found two dates. One was in... Uh, uh, the January and other was in the February. Uh, she said, uh, whichever date you are comfortable, just select and uh, fix uh, uh, this examination for you because uh, you, you, I am hopeful that you will get through this exam. Don't linger on that now. So uh, uh, I think uh, uh, this is something I have rarely found uh, in any of uh, 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 my mentor across my career because uh, uh, PFMP is not uh, my only uh, certification. I have done things in the uh, uh, 
public accountancy and also uh, many other things related to my profession. But uh, this rigorous follow-up uh, uh, that uh, was uh, made by Ms. Tuba was exemplary. Uh, wherever you are uh, looking uh, at your uh, mentor, you look for the guidance. Uh, uh, I think uh, that was right from the start, uh, as uh, uh, she told uh, the audience that uh, the PFMP uh, process is a two uh, phases process. First, uh, your application is reviewed by a panel of portfolio experts uh, that whether the experience uh, uh, qualifies to sit in the examination or not. And uh, I remember that uh, we had a couple of uh, meetings uh, explaining that what I have been doing uh, during my current and previous jobs uh, so that she can extract the right information to fit into the application form. And uh, uh, she was uh, getting back and forth with the, the write-up for the application material. I was adding my inputs uh, so that uh, uh, I can uh, better explain in the portfolio management terminology that what precisely I was doing it, uh, which organizations were involved, at what level my activities uh, uh, took place in my professional career. So that was, a, again, a very consultative process, and uh, uh, she uh, did it in a splendid way. And that's why uh, when my application was uh, uh, submitted, I think in a couple of weeks time, I got uh, the approval uh, that I am eligible to sit in PFMP uh, examination. And uh, then uh, the period started, which ended uh, the 10th of February this year. In addition to that uh, means I remember her sharing her experiences during the uh, examination in during this phase that what she experienced during uh, her own examination uh, uh, for the PFMP and all the mentees who passed the PFMP, what did they say that how the examination is, what areas that you need to focus, uh, 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 these were some things. And then uh, because uh, during this journey means uh, you, you, you need the support from uh, your professional colleagues, from the family, from the mentors who encourage you, who motivate you. And then definitely holding you accountable as well, that, uh, that this is something that you have to uh, do yourself. And then providing the feedback, I remember that um, um, I was uh, updating her regarding uh, the scores on the mock test that uh, in this domain, I scored this much percentage and in this domain, I scored this much. So she was uh, telling me, okay, this uh, uh, seems okay, you have, Two more days uh, to review all these things, and uh, I'm sure that you will uh, uh, you will uh, go through it. Then uh, guidance, and then comes the uh, resources. Means the provision of resources. Uh, I remember that uh, whatever she had uh, for the preparation of the portfolio management professional examination, she shared with uh, uh, with me that these are the resources that will be definitely helpful for you. And even I remember uh, a day before uh, my examination, there was a webinar uh, like this. So that gentleman was mentioning of a green book now. And after that, I uh, told Ms. Suba, I don't, have, I don't have that green book with me or I haven't seen it yet. She immediately sent it to me, okay, this is the green book and uh, you definitely have to go through before the test because uh, mostly the test looks like uh, the questions that have been uh, uh, included in this green book. And I can really uh, uh, say that uh, that the book was really helpful. So overall, I, uh, uh, I can say that a mentor can play a valuable role in supporting individual preparing for the PFMP certification through guidance, experience sharing, offering support, providing the feedback and suggesting the resources. So uh, th these are all the things that uh, uh, I was lucky enough to receive uh, 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 from uh, Ms. Tuba uh, and uh, her firm on time uh, consultancy firm. 
so 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 the, the, this is what i experienced uh, as a mentee from my mentor and uh, uh, you are uh, so you you are actually referring uh, to green book and uh, you are recommending the green book the most out of all the material you would say that green book is uh, most near to the real exam uh, i i i would so say that means uh, then uh, you know uh, when you complete your journey and you look back and uh, see that what 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 things that i have consulted i think this is a uh, progressive uh, uh, journey for example if, uh, if you are uh, uh, ensuring that you know the inputs tools and techniques then you go for the lithi mohammed uh, mock tests uh, and going uh, at a step ahead i think on time uh, uh, tests though two mock tests these were very valuable then the pg 30 uh, two mock test these were very very important and these were uh, really helpful in uh, getting the sense of the examination that we actually are going to see in that exam and finally uh, means i think the green book should be the last uh, uh, result that uh, you are about to sit in the examination you should go through the green book it will give you confidence that uh, how much prepared you are and how much uh, the clarity of thoughts regarding the principles and the practices of portfolio management are there yeah i, I agree actually with this so uh, you know uh, at, uh, at times uh, people ask the this question not at times actually in every webinar uh, someone has asked this question that would you recommend any mock which was uh, like mostly there in the exam in the real exam or which was the nearest to the real exam that that would like just uh, uh, you know minimize that uh, you know, uh, that uh, i would say that uh, positive risk which is there which is uh, the opportunity which is there for you to to trust you and to trust your knowledge to trust your practice if you already know that okay this book is going to be mostly in the exam or something similar in the exam then what's uh, what is going to be the charm the charm is uh, that you know nothing about the exam and still you believe yourself that you are good enough uh, prepared enough based on the practice and the guidance and the concepts and the uh, standardization learning that you have done throughout this journey that i think would make uh, more sense in fact for the people who are in this role because usually pfmp uh, credential holders or the aspirants they are very uh, experienced professionals uh, at least 10 years or at times 20 to 25 years of experience as well so they should be thinking that way. they should not be thinking this way that okay uh, let's sit uh, five days uh, ahead of exam grab the marks just do the marks and uh, get done with the credential that's that's just killing the purpose of it that's not the purpose of doing any credential doing any credential means knowing what the credential is about owning that uh, those learnings implementing that later on as well and proving that you know your thing in the exam as well that i would say is the right way of uh, going about any standardization we are just going that uh, for the credential i mean this is not something one should be going for uh, the uh, like and uh, th this is not uh, the right mindset as well in my opinion in my humble opinion so uh, in in uh, connect with this uh, thought uh, pfmp is not an uh, an inexpensive it's an in, uh, it's an expensive uh, you know investment um, it's uh, exam as well as the training and uh, whichever mentor you are going to uh, they are usually pretty uh, expensive because uh, they are sitting in the international market so of course their uh, their brands and their uh, charges are accordingly so at the very least uh, this credential is going to cost you uh, around 1600 to 1700 us dollar which is a huge investment at least for any pakistani person because uh, dollar devaluation is uh, huge these days in in our country so uh, why why uh, would you think somebody was would invest in this like from the financial perspective as well as from a uh, commitment and uh, you are investing your time you are investing your energy you are prioritizing other things to get done with this milestone what is the return uh, that you would think uh, would be coming this is the most uh, critical question that i ask in this uh, webinar towards the end of it because uh, uh, this conversation actually usually prolongs 
So what is your thought? Uh, um, I think uh, the answer lies uh, what you, a few minutes ago, you told that uh, there are uh, only 1400 people holding this credential across the globe. And uh, when I uh, uh, got this credential, I was probably the 12th or 13th Pakistani. So even just getting that feeling that makes you very satisfied for that. And uh, in addition to that, uh, uh, one more thing, I think uh, in uh, last webinar where I was also a participant, I was listening to that gentleman and uh, 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 I, I was of the view that uh, 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 if you are investing that uh, I'm going to invest it and uh, in next few weeks or the few months I am getting uh, the return on that, this is not the case in most of the people who are getting this credential, but still it is worthwhile because uh, this credential offers a positive return on investment, both for the individual and the organization. It enhances career opportunities. It improves organizational performance. It mitigates the risks of the portfolio that you are managing it increases efficiency and productivity, and it also enhances your reputation as portfolio manager. And uh, uh, I think uh, that by investing in uh, the PFMP certification, individuals uh, can demonstrate uh, the commitment to their profession and uh, their commitment to the excellence, uh, not only in the short-term basis, but on the long-term basis as well. So the opportunities are there, and uh, uh, I will uh, uh, sum up my uh, uh, sum up my response on this adage. Uh, they say that uh, when preparation meets the opportunity, this is called luck. So in order to become lucky, uh, this is uh, the preparation, and whenever there will be an opportunity, we will match it, and we will become lucky. Yes, I agree. I totally agree. And I would add one more thing, which I personally feel like, uh, not as a trainer, but as a PFMP uh, credential holder, I would say, uh, if we talk in, in the language of, uh, uh, you know, uh, in the organizational language, like uh, KPIs and metrics and targets, and because this is what we are after, wherever we are, even uh, be it at the individual level, be it at the uh, corporate level, we are after certain targets after certain goals right so goals and targets and metrics and kpis can be at the individual level and it can be at the project level can be at the program level can be at the departmental level and can be at the organizational level as well so and when we talk about goals or targets or metrics they can be tangible they can be intangible same is the case with these credentials same is the case uh, with our progression as an individual as a professional as well so i always say this in every webinar i will keep on saying this because this is what i believe in uh, people would say that you are a trainer you will have to have credentials i become trainer by luck i would say uh, not that luck that um, uh, modeli mentioned uh, like i i became a trainer by luck that was not the plan actually when i did my pfmp i wanted to be in the corporate sector i wanted to be uh, excelling in in that uh, in in that domain where I was at and due to some reasons I had to leave that and I had to uh, go with my own thing but whatever the case was I was ready I was prepared enough to start something of my own due to xyz factors and that is something that you should always be after that things can change anytime for you and you should not be reactive you should rather be proactive you should be ready for that right so yeah I don't think this way that okay when it's going to be this way when organization starts laying off when uh, uh, the, uh, the recession is going to be there or when uh, organizational uh, condition is not well, then we will see that how we are going to um, progress uh, um, with our career development or so. No, be ready for that. Be market competitive. Be a better version of yourself every other day. And this is regardless. Maybe you are doing really good in your career right now. Really, really good. You don't need anything. But learning is a continuous process. Learning yeah. is not required because you think that you need a career level up or 
you need more money or you need a um, promising role or you need uh, some tangible benefits, some tangible financial or monetary benefits. Of course, there is no harm in getting that. That's, that's not the purpose of having this conversation, but that should not be the only reason why you are after it. The, uh, you should be primarily after these uh, uh, credentials or any standardization or any kind of learning, as the Kaizen model says. Kaizen model says that continuous improvement or continuous learning at any level is not associated with the financial investment. You can take baby steps. You you may not be investing even a single penny and you can improve yourself. You can learn a new things. You can progress in your career, right? Uh, earning the credentials should not be the, uh, the target. Okay. The target should be the learning. These credentials, these bodies actually provide you a holistic uh, curriculum and uh, you know the, uh, the structure in a way that it's going to be very beneficial. That's why we go after that they structure their material in a way that it's really, really helpful. And I, I myself have been the example, I have seen many people who have gone after these credentials and their career, have, their career, their personalities, their confidence, their attitude, all of that has uh, like just changed drastically. So that happens, actually that happens. And this is the, this is the actual return, I would say. This is the actual return and rest everything follows. Monetary benefits just follows you, follows them. Yeah. Intangible yeah. actually matters the most, in my opinion, which you should be after, mm -hmm. which are not monetary, which are not even measurable. That can only be, uh, like that can only be observed, experienced, that can only be felt, or that can only be perceived by the others who are around you. They will see that change in you. Maybe you will not be able to see that change in yourself, but they are seeing that change, which credentials and standardization and the right learning has been uh, injected in. I would not say only credentials. Right learning, knowledge can be uh, secured from anywhere. Internet is full of material, free material. If you are after a, a continuous improvement, you can just go um, with that as well. But the structure will be less over there, I would say. Structure would be really less. You, would, you need to be a little more organized at your end to go with that channel but that channel is there if you don't want to invest you can learn uh, you can still learn anything at that level um okay so uh, in the interest of time i think we should be winding up the conversation and we should be taking the questions if uh, uh, anyone from the audience want to uh, ask any questions so in the very last what advice you uh, would you want to give to the uh, future portfolio managers current portfolio managers pfmp aspirants those who are actively uh, preparing and their dates are booked or maybe in the next one to two months, they are going to sit in the exam. What is your advice to them? Uh, first of all, uh, I will emphasize that uh, the PFMP certification is recognized and respected in the professional market. And uh, PFMP certified professionals are highly valued for their expertise in the portfolio management. And their certification adds uh, uh, value to the organization and open doors to the new career opportunity and advancement. And uh, I was uh, 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 just reading one of the uh, question. Uh, this is actually uh, a very good question. Yes. Yeah, means uh, uh, it was asked that uh, it is beneficial for the government uh, uh, employees or the people working in the international development arena. Actually, uh, would you believe that even the medical professionals who are implementing the projects, uh, they are doing PMP, PGMP, and PFMP nowadays in order to become top of uh, their profession. For example, there are dozens of organizations at the international level, including many UN agencies, uh, which employ doctors with such kind of certifications in order to lead the project or the organization or the divisions uh, uh, related to their projects, programs, and portfolio activities. So uh, thinking that it can benefit uh, only a certain uh, professions or certain organizations, I, I, I humbly tend to disagree and uh, because uh, if you look at my career, means I worked in the banks, I worked in the public sector organization, I worked in the uh, USAID contractors, I worked with the Aachen Development Network, I, I'm now working with a multilateral development bank nowadays. So 
my experience is different means uh, these skills uh, these are sought after by all the professional organizations anywhere in the world and uh, interestingly uh, ms tuba was mentioning that uh, uh, there are very few people at the pfmp credential holders in pakistan and uh, very less knowledge but to be very honest i am convinced that globally uh, these uh, c- credentials are respected and recognized and that's why it means uh, uh, i am very hopeful that uh, uh, i have been doing uh, the international assignment but this pfmp is going to open the door for another international assignment for me in the days to come inshallah inshallah yes i i uh, uh, agree with that and uh, to answer the question by stress so stress if you uh, if, what i'm understanding is that you are sort of an individual uh, contractor uh, uh, sort of uh, like a professional who offers the services to certain organizations uh, maybe correct me if i am wrong uh, but i would say that pfmp is more suitable for those people who are associated with a proper company or an organization which has multiple divisions and departments and they are working uh, or they are leading certain division or a department or a section in the company and they are contributing to the strategic objectives and the goals so if your role is uh, not of that sort and if you are more of a freelance contractor which can be hired by any company for their respective uh, operations or projects or programs in that case i agree most likely pfmp is not for you. most likely pmp is going to be more helpful for you because you probably would be involved in multiple projects uh, at certain uh, customer organizations and you need to be like managing uh, those uh, life cycles and uh, the contribution and delivery at the project level so if this is the case then i would agree pfmp is not for you it's not suitable for you so this is my first step when someone comes to me uh, as a prospective goal of uh, any certification i first understand their current profile their uh, career aspirations uh, their targets for the next 4 to 5 years and then i advise them that i credential uh, it's not just that anyone comes to me and they say that we want to do pfmp and i just say that oh okay let's start with that no uh, there are many cases when i refuse uh, them uh, uh, to go with pfmp maybe they are not ready for that or maybe right now they are more suitable for pmp or maybe some equivalent uh, certification and less uh, eligible for any such role so you are right um, pfmp but that uh, in your statement that part is wrong that pfmp uh, uh, like more uh, 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 is more benefited to the governmental uh, people or the public sector organization that is true but uh, i belong to the software uh, sector and the it sector there are many students around the globe who i am mentoring and uh, they are from a variety of industries some belongs to oil and gas some belongs to a uh, chemical industry some belongs to um, uh, like uh, the, the software implementation as well hardware making as well as long as you belong to any organization and that organization has a vision and a goal and they are working towards some uh, some ta- uh, targets in the market you can be a pfm but you need to be associated with a proper organization as well yes so uh, if there is any other question or comment by anyone they can just unmute uh, and uh, they can just uh, come forward and ask them otherwise we are done with the agenda i, th- I don't think that we have other questions uh, from uh, the audience so if there is any any anything that anyone would like to add or ask we are pleased to answer them anyone would has any question or any query regarding pfmp or maybe uh, has a direct question uh, to mohammad ali uh okay in that case we are pretty much on time as well so um, um we are done with the agenda thank you mohammad ali for joining us thank and you. providing your uh, very useful i really enjoyed uh, this conversation so this uh, conversation was very thorough very detailed and i am pretty sure that it uh, it must be very useful for the audience as well and i would uh, like to suggest uh, to the audience to the aspirants that if they are looking uh, forward to uh, pfmp career goals in the near future then my next training program is starting from uh, the first week of may if you are interested to discuss uh, that with me uh, feel free to connect with me i have shared my uh, communication channel so over the chat uh, you can just uh, search me on linkedin and we can have a conversation over there as well 
Um, and I can suggest to you as well that uh, what would be the uh, next best career move for you. Uh, maybe not PFMP, but maybe uh, other, some other things that uh, uh, you can go after. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us, taking our time and to be with us and staying with us um, you know, till the last uh, uh, minute. I will definitely come very soon uh, um, again with another uh, success story, inshallah. And uh, till then, uh, please um, take care of yourself and I will meet you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everyone, for taking time and uh... Uh, listening to us. Thanks a lot. Take care. Allah Bye-bye. Thank you. Allah Thank